Hello, welcome to 8.9 News. I'm Finn Locustain. Today's headlines, lab-grown meat is high carbon, high cost, and unlikely to scale. RABDF's Regenerative Agriculture Conference Down to Earth begins in two weeks' time. And UK pension funds are proving slow to invest in biodiversity. This year's Down to Earth Conference will focus on the facts, opportunities, science and practicalities of regenerative agriculture. Matthew Knight is the Managing Director of the Royal Association of British Dairy Farmers, and I asked him why RABDF is running the Down to Earth Conference. Uh, we got a bit frustrated at RABDF um, along the lines that um, dairy farming or livestock farming gets hammered from certain circles and uh, is the uh, Beelzebub or the devil for climate change. And... Um, you know, this isn't the case. And it always amazed me where certain organisations or farmers wouldn't push back on, on that um, accusation. And some of those accusations can be quite forceful uh, and pretty aggressive. So I was always quite surprised by that. And we started to think, why? And um, after thinking um, long and hard about it, we suddenly came to the conclusion that actually people don't know the, the true facts about they can play a positive part in, in climate change and working with the environment. And um, it's a sad fact where people didn't know the, their lines, their script or their words. Um, so came to the conclusion that actually there's a knowledge exchange piece here, an educational piece. Uh, and what would that look like? Could that look like um, something in trade press or or the fact where it could be an event? And we at RABDF always believe that farmers like to learn from other farmers, face-to-face -face learning, good practical advice. Um, so the the, um, the concept of Down to Earth was, was launched and it kind of spiraled from there. And Down to Earth is specifically a regenerative agriculture event, isn't it? So why regen? Um, so it is, yeah, yeah, regen. Um, and I guess it's kind of a, a broad term that it means something different to everybody. Uh, in that way. Um, but regen, I think, resonates with consumers really strongly. I remember um, watching Spring Watch uh, or, or Autumn Watch, uh, it was a few years back. And, you know, they always go down to a, an area of, um, of land which talks about where the woodpeckers are, where the, uh, the wetlands are and so on. And smack bang in the middle of that map was regenerative farming land. And it kind of, the, the penny drop that actually consumers can relate to that term. So I think it's really important that we, we go ahead into it and what it is. Now, the first Down to Earth was last year and it was a huge success. So I wonder how you're building on that success this year. Yeah, it was um, it was a bit like Pandora's box, actually. We, didn't, uh, we, we started the, the event concept and thought, well, if we get 500 people there, you know, we'll be really pleased. And um, as we went along the, the event, management task list as it were or building to the day and adding little bits and bobs here uh it had an awful lot and, and um the day actually attracted over uh, well circa to 1800 farmers um yeah and you know i think it was the fact that it's it's delivering welly boot level practical advice that people really um take a shine to and um, so how have we grown it um we we kind of look back and thought actually we want to make it accessible for as many as possible um, so we've, we've launched the North and South this year. Um, so South taking part in Somerset and Neil Baker's farm on the 21st of June. And the North event is taking place at Mark and Jenny Lee's in Cumbria on the uh, 6th of July. Now, you mentioned Neil Baker there, and some people may be surprised that the southern part of this regenerative farming event is being held on a fully indoor dairy farm. And I wonder why that is. That's a great question. And I'm, I'm pleased you've asked that. Um, and I can understand that some people would think that, but uh, I think this is a school of thought that people can look at it a bit differently and think, actually, we need to be encompassing and everyone can make that change. Everyone can make a step change uh, in various different facets on their farm. You know, regenerative thinking, regenerative farming or farming with the environment can be for everybody. And I think that's really important that we include everybody in on this journey be it looking after soil, um, be it looking after pasture, water management, and then biodiversity comes hand in hand with that as well. I think everybody needs to um, be open to this, um, these strategies that they can implement on their own farm, be it whatever enterprise they're farming or whatever system they're utilising. Yeah. If people are too exclusive about it or too purist, uh, then ultimately it's going to fail as a project, isn't it? And, and actually we need all farms to regenerate in whatever way they can. 
Exactly. And there's also an element with especially dairy farmers that their retailer um, will be looking for carbon footprinting. And, you know, there's no point in just doing carbon footprinting for carbon footprinting sake. You know, do it to make a difference because we all can and we all can play a positive part in this. Yeah. So just finally, what can people expect on the day? You know, they pay their money, they've turned up. What do they get? Um, so there's there's an awful lot going on there. Uh, like I alluded to Pandora's box earlier on, and it, it, it just seems to get bigger and bigger with every event that we do. So there's a main stage with a keynote session um, where people can um, quiz uh, Neil Baker uh, about what he's doing on his farm and he can set the scene. And then we've got um, uh, You Good Self talking about um, cows and the role that they can play in, uh, in climate change, the positive role. And then on that main stage, they'll be running four um, industry debates about regenerative farming, about how to start um, your journey, because I guess there's a bit of paralysis always on a journey, which is the first step. Where do you start? How can you break that down and get the confidence to do it? Also about healthier animals uh, and what they can mean on regenerative journeys, uh, looking at different systems and so on. So the really exciting main stage that runs throughout the day. I think we've got something like 80 to 90 exhibitors in a trade area. Uh, and then also there's various talking stations uh, around Neil's farm, which will look at a uh, maize trial and, and co-drilling, looking at increasing biodiversity, uh, pasture management, looking at various lays um, and how you can keep the longevity of those. Um, uh, we've got sustainable feeding options. So this is something that Neil's um, honed in because he's a, an Isla pilot uh, regen scheme farmer. So he's looking at what he's feeding his cows and the, and the, and the food miles to get that to farm. Um, we're looking at re, uh, reusable energy or sustainable energy. Um, so there's the AD plant there that we're talking about. And then the fuel that can take off that to power tractors, electric talent handlers. And there's also a soil science um, a talk station looking and digging down into a soil pit and seeing what's going on. And then I always think about the soil science side of things, which is in sport, you talk about the top two inches where things are won, but actually in farming, it's, you know, the top six inches, as it were, what's going on down there and so on. So awful lot of learning to, to, um, to take on board. And then there's various practical demonstrations around the farm as well. So a lot to do and see and listen and learn in a full day. That was Matthew Knight from the Royal Association of British Dairy Farmers. More about this and our other headline news on our website, 8.9.com. That's all for now. We're back on Monday. Thanks for watching.